Okay, thank you so much. Um, it was a great introduction. So today's workshop is gonna be work smarter, not harder to get hired. And I'm gonna give you five tips to move your career forward. Okay, so you can, go next one, please. Now, this webinar is for those who are feeling stuck in their career, feeling defeated in their job search, tired of never um, getting strong leads, you know, um, give me a show of hands, the raised hand as to if this relates to you. How many raised hands do we have? So no worry, if you're not, you've come to the right place. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna start with this quote, focus on being productive instead of busy, Tim Ferriss. Now, I really resonated with this quote because I found that when you're unemployed and you're looking for work or you're doing a new beginning, uh, many of us were really busy doing stuff, but then we're not moving forward. And it's about being productive. Okay, um, can everyone hear me now? How's this? Okay, next slide, please. So about the presenter, my name is Colin McLean. I'm a career blacksmith and I'm an experienced employment specialist and a challenge coach, author, and motivational speaker. I've got 20 plus years of business experience and I um, spent most of them in employment and counseling, job development, recruitment, and employment services and marketing. So based on all that of my recruitment, whereby you'd most likely would have sent a resume to me, I would have looked at it and put you in the pile of yes or no for interviews. Do you guys think it's a um, good place to be at right now to listen to someone who's on the other side of the table? You can put your comments in the chat. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is my first book. It was called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to My Career, 50 Practical Rules to Get the Job You Want. And this is when I was unemployed, flat broke, and struggling. And then I found the key to getting employed. And it was about working smarter, not harder. And I'll share my story in a little bit. Uh, next slide, please. So... When you're looking for work and you're looking to move your career forward, you know, it's normal to feel trapped. Can I share with you my trap moments? Anyone? So it all goes back. I'm going to take you back about uh, 20 years, uh, um, actually more, like 25 years or so, whereby I graduated from school. I was working in the import-export company. Life was good. You know, I'm no longer washing dishes as a student or cleaning toilets. I'm actually dressed in like a um, suit. I'm getting paid. I'm insuring shipments from like Dubai to um, Canada or wherever in the world. I'm doing like jewelry, um, diamonds. I'm doing um, tanks, uh, rockets. It's a great job. I'm enjoying it. And then I meet the woman of my dreams. That's phenomenal. And we get married and we get a place. And then things sort of change when I had my, um, when my wife and I had a baby girl. We had our in-laws living with us uh, because um, they were going to move back to the West Indies to retire, but they needed a place to stay. And that was fine. But for those who have children, um, when it's just you and your spouse, you've got a huge place. When you throw in a baby, um, the crib, the stroller, the playpen, it gets really tiny. So I've taken parental leave and that was by far the hardest job of my life whereby my daughter didn't sleep there at night. I was a complete wreck. I took it for seven months. My wife took the first um, six months. I took the last uh, six, seven months and came back to work and I discovered we got bought out by an American firm. And when I got bought out, I was a little bit hesitant, but I figured, hey, I've been here for 15 years it should be good. Uh, why? Because I'm a hard worker. I come to work on time and I don't uh, mess around. And then I noticed that the job I had, whereby they had to be traveling around the, um, 
the country training people on different softwares for the offices. That was no more. I was kind of grounded. So my rings, wings were clipped and I had to stay in the office filing paper and I hate filing paper. Then I noticed that I have to interview for this new position. And long story short, it's not looking too good for me. But because I have a mortgage, I have um, a one-year-old child, I have my in-laws living with me, I decide to stick it out. And we buy a bigger place, um, the house that I'm in now, because we needed the space, it was really cramped. And then within 12 hours, can you believe what happened to me after that? 12 hours of signing the documentations for owning this house. I lose my job. Yeah, so one minute I'm employed, 12 hours later, I'm unemployed. And it was like, thanks for your service. Um, we gave your job to the students, no hard feelings. We appreciate what you've done. Wish you the best of luck. And I was devastated. And to make matters worse, I wasn't able to sell my existing house. So I'm carrying two mortgages for about three months straight until I get the original house uh, sold. So I'm flat broke, unemployed now. All my savings have like gone completely within like six months because I'm paying double mortgage and I'm tapped out. I start falling into like a pit of despair mentally. Like I'm sure many of you may have experienced that. I hope that's not the case. But when you're going through a, a pit of despair, you're not able to move forward and it feels like you're actually in a pit you can't get out. And that's what I've experienced. And to make matters worse, I had my parents call me every day asking me, son, do you find work yet? Son, do you find work yet? I try to tell them this is not 1978, whereby you could leave a job and get another job within a half an hour. Um, this was back in like the 90s, and it was challenging. And I'm applying to places. I'm like working hard, sending out resumes every day. No one's taking uh, my resumes. And then I have my in-laws, um, like they're um, you know, family members, other family members asking me to find a work yet oh, we found there was a position at a grocer doing packing of groceries. Now, one minute I am ensuring million dollar shipments across the world. Next minute, I'm actually having to apply as a grocery bagger. Now, I didn't do it because my pride was there. I'm thinking, how far have I fallen? And then it got worse whereby it went on to like two and a half years of me being unemployed. I'm going to interviews, failing miserably, still sending out resumes. And then I ended up taking a job at a uh, call center. Now, I would probably would have called you if you were in Canada um, all this time about your direct and energy. And I felt horrible doing it because I had to find people uh, like $5,000, $3,000 for them coming off of their, um, off of their contract. Long story short, I'm about the oldest person in the whole room. The average age in there was about 16, 17. And I'm like a grown man in my 30s. And I remember I stood up one night because I had to um, do the night shift. And I looked around and I, something told me, you do not belong. You got to get out of this pit. So when I changed my mindset, started doing things differently, that's when the magic happened. And I eventually um, found employment. But you can go on. I'll tell you my story more, okay? Next slide, please. So through that pain and everything, uh, this is what I came up with of how to work smarter and harder. I'm going to cover five points. And the first one is be on guard, but open. Next one, click. Invest in a bank called you. This was something I was not doing. Next one, please. You are more than your resume. That was a big shocker for me. Fourth, uh, become the greatest salesperson. That I definitely was not that. And five is network to connect. Okay, so these are the ones I'm going to cover. And I'm going to now start off with number one, which is guard and be open. Okay, so be on guard, but open. So your mind is a doorway. Guard yourself from negative thoughts as well as negative people. Now, if you're unemployed, um, you ever notice that those who are unemployed and those who hang around people who are unemployed, usually there's like a negative um, attitude. No, it's understandable. Like you're not working, um, you're not on purpose, you're not living your dreams, and it can be kind of hard. But I found that when I started hanging around with negative people, I too became negative. I became depressed. Um, I didn't want to talk to people. And, you know, 
I remember going to uh, parties like with friends and I remember my wife had um, two ex-boyfriends and they're great guys. They're phenomenal. And they'd always invite us over to their place for like um, Christmas dinner or not Christmas dinner, but maybe like New Year's Eve or like a party get together for a barbecue. Great guys. Uh, one of them was in actual um, IT and he worked there. He didn't like it. And he was a manager. He leaves there for another job and becomes a um, director. So one minute he's a manager, next minute his salary is doubled and he's now a director. And I'm feeling like a schmuck, like just horrible going to their house because this is great. I just got this new car, you know, I'm so happy, this new position. And then there's me. Oh, what, how, what are you doing? And what's the second question people ask you when they meet you besides these different events? Like, what do you do for a living? And I'm saying, oh, well, I'm an artist because I started to dabble in my artwork, but I can't sell my art because I'm a horrible salesman, so I'm not making money. And I'm just like flat broke. And I'm thinking my wife is going to leave me because I am not producing. I'm not, I feel like a deadbeat father. I wasn't, but I felt that internally. And then my other uh, wife's um, second um, boyfriend from the past, another great guy, he has his own family and everything, go to his house, he gets into real estate just when the market's booming. And people started selling million dollar homes. He tells us, I had sold my first million dollar home. I was so excited. He's not saying to say, look at me, I'm great. He's just really excited if he sold a million dollar home, the commission. Then his business starts growing and he ends up actually um, selling um, in the West Indies because he has so much money now. He has a license in the West Indies to sell real estate. That's booming. He doesn't know where to put his money. So he buys a furniture store to house, to furnish the places he's selling. Me, on the other hand, I'm getting my parents calling me saying, Colin, you're doing the drawing thing yet? Have my aunts calling me, Colin, you're doing the drawing thing yet? Have you looked into that um, grocery clerk position? So I'm feeling horrible. But when I started hanging with people with wings, the ones who lift you up, not the ones with anchors, I was able to see the possibilities and start moving forward. Okay, so next slide, please. So this is really um, interesting. Um, Nelly um, Chopra says this, he's a rapper, I believe. Everything you want to accomplish is already within yourself. So when you start to roll in self-doubt and think negative thoughts, then you fall off. That was definitely me. Uh, so keep visualizing and keep knowing what you're destined for, it will come to you. Now that's exactly the moment that I experienced when I was at that call center and it was minimum wage. And I remember I was dealing with my mom who had Alzheimer's and taking her from mom with Alzheimer's. And then I'd have to go to work, I'd drop my daughter out to daycare in the morning, come home, try to look for work. And then um, all of a sudden I have to go to work to the call center, which I don't like doing It's a part-time job. And my mom is gone, left the house, gone wandering because her Alzheimer's kicked in. I can't find her. I'm going to be late for work. Finally, I see her. She's at 10 houses down at the wrong house, got to bring her in, lock the door and leave and hope she doesn't leave because my wife's going to be home in the next hour and a half, but I couldn't stay. So I was um, pretty much devastated. And the reason why I wasn't able to find work because I really believed in myself that I wasn't good enough. Um, that's the honest truth. I believe that this was it. I'm going to be doing dead end jobs to the day I die. And I really couldn't find any opportunities. But when I said, to myself, I stood up that late night at the um, call center says, yes, it's possible for me to move forward and I'm going to move forward. That's when the magic happened. I started networking and eventually got a position. Um, what's interesting is when I went for that position and my wife, she grilled me on interview, just like what Access Employment does of helping for interview. Um, my wife was really like she wanted me to succeed and she was so ruthless that I almost wanted to cry. And, but I knew that what she was saying was really true. So she would say, tell me about yourself. I'm mumbling, stuttering, giving half answers. He says, nope, do a game, do a game, do a game. And then eventually I got more confident. So I go for this job interview. And I was at the point, the mindset where I said that there could be 200 people sitting in that waiting room. The job is mine. It was to be an instructor. So I go in there. And I do my presentation because they want me to do a presentation. And then all of a sudden I'm finished and then they run away. They physically get up and they run out of the office. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, my wife is going to kill me. I failed the interview. I'm thinking I 
thought I did amazing, but I guess not. So I'm packing up my um, laptop and projector and I'm thinking, why don't I tell my wife, what excuse when I tell her I didn't get the job? They come back and said, sign the papers, sign the papers, you're it, you're the one, you're the one and don't leave. And they signed the papers and then I was employed. So that's where all the magic happened, but it was me visualizing and knowing that I was destined for it. Okay, so that's my advice to you. Next slide. So invest in a bank called you. If you want to change, you must first change yourself. So I started investing myself. I started doing, um, learning more um, programs. I started um, doing public speaking. I started doing other stuff. And then when you're able to do that, that's when you become more attractive to employers. And there's a saying that repetition is the mother of skill. Invest in the time of learning the skill. No one um, becomes a master overnight. And you know, having more skills makes you more attractive to a potential employers. But if you've been doing the same job, the same skill set, and you haven't evolved, then we can't hire you. An example um, can be when I was in recruitment. We were looking for an admin person for an employer. And someone sends me the resume, and I see that they know DOS and the no Lotus Notes. There's no mention of Microsoft Office. That was outdated way back in the 80s. So this person was an elderly person, and then they couldn't, um, they couldn't um, be a good person to match. So that's what happened pretty much. So that's why I have to say to you, make sure that you're always growing, developing, and investing yourself because when you invest in yourself, become more attractive to employers to hire, okay? Next slide, please. So this was key for me. You're more than your resume, it's just a piece of paper. Now, it took me a while to figure that out. Um, I figured that me working in the import export company was, was great. I just need to send it out and boom, within a day or two, I'd be employed. It wasn't the case. So for one, my resume was outdated. Two, I actually found out that I think it was about six months into it, I actually had the wrong phone number on my resume. And that's because of stress, you know, of looking for work and panicking and stuff. And then um, three, I found that there was spelling mistakes in my resume. Why? Because I'm stressed. And I found that when I learned to network and communicate with people, they would ask for the resume. And then that was the added uh, bonus. But I didn't just send it out blindly, right? Because uh, when you're sending out resumes, like some people are receiving resumes, like it becomes white paper on black text. That's what I was seeing after a while. Next slide, please. So today, um, recruiters uh, skim resumes on average of 7.4 seconds. This is back in, in 2018. I'm sure it's less. So let's just think about this. So resume comes, and I've, I was the person looking at the resume to hire a person, and I'm spending 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 2005, 2006, 2007. No, it's not the resume. As you can see, that was not a long time to spend. So you have to be able to be strategic when you're doing your resume. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so put down percentages, put down numbers and dollar amounts if possible. So how much did you save the company? Uh, how many people did you work for? How many people did you manage? What was the percentage of increase of you coming on board, of you doing the phenomenal job? But if you just say, I did this duty, this task, this task, I'm a hard worker, you're not going to stand out. People um, gravitate to numbers, percentages, and dollar amounts. So put that where possible in your resume. So for example, I would say um, the past experience um, doing like pro project management, I was able to launch five chapters within eight weeks in a um, national, on a national level. I could say that um, we enrollment increased to um, 115 because we did extra stuff and we um, tripled our numbers. Dollar amount, you know, I saved um, $30,000 on uh, training for the company by me doing the training myself, stuff like that, okay? So uh, next one, please. Now, this is the time you're gonna have to start thinking out of the box. You know, um, is there any groups you can join? 
before we just send our resumes out blindly don't work hopeless monster whatever the case may be and is there any content you could create so if you have a background in maybe finance or project management maybe you can start writing contents and articles to post on linkedin are there any ways to demonstrate your talents because you don't want to be just the resume you want to be an expert in your field to make yourself more attractive because when you go to employers you can say hey i have a blog on this thing i have written some articles on this show that to them okay next one please so think at the box so this is where i failed a lot of times um become the great salesperson and engage now this comes back to i guess um living in canada you're raised not to like poke your head out you know don't be the salesman because it's like the it's this dirty word of being a salesman because you're going to shush your people and sales always have a bad name but when you're unemployed you're looking for work you are selling yourself it's what you're selling like me incorporated so in the minds of every employer is who are you what can you do for me and how can i make or save money off of you you got to sell them that idea so when you networking out there sell them that you're the best person or the next next best thing okay so don't be afraid this is the time where you're gonna have to like rise up and really make yourself known okay next one please now every great salesperson knows a product and service you've got to do the same thing for yourself you've got to know they know where their clients um, needs and they know where to find them so start thinking where are your clients or your hiring managers hiding it's the hidden job market where can you find them there's LinkedIn, there's um, different groups that they belong to, associations. Go there, find them, seek, and be able to communicate how you're the best person based on numbers, percentages, et cetera, okay? Uh, next. Okay, so next is network to connect. Um, so you gotta be the farmer and not the hunter, okay? so. This is very important because many people, when they're networking, they go for the hunt, the kill. Like when you're a hunter, you hunt something, you kill it, it's done, it's finished. But when you're a farmer, you're planting, you're investing, you know, crop comes back the following year. So don't kill your opportunities by being too desperate. Um, think about this way. Have you ever gone to like a dance somewhere and you see a person cross the room and they're looking, they're trying to dance with every person, they look desperate. Um, it's a bit of a turnoff to people, you know? So I get it whereby you may be feeling stressed, you may be feeling panicked that, you know, maybe you've left one country, you had a good job and you come here, or maybe you had a good paying job here and then you've lost your um, down to downsizing and you're thinking, how am I gonna pay bills? But if you're panicking, it sends a bit of a negative energy out there and people don't want, want, don't want to be around you. And I remember going to job interviews with that same panic, desperation, please give me the job, please give me a job, I'll take anything. And then it's a bit of a turnoff. So to understand it takes time. So what I can share with you right now is one of my worst interviews ever. I had the mindset of, um, I need to get this job, panic, um, please help me. And I remember getting a call from some company and it was for like a boiler room sales, high pressure sales kind of a thing. And I don't remember applying to it, but it's the same thing where you're unemployed, you send 10,000 resumes out and you don't know who the player's name is. So they call me and they say, come in for interview. So I come in and I'm feeling down, defeated because it's now going on to year two. I haven't found employment, um, nothing's working out and I remember thinking to myself, you know, I'm a failure, I'm a schmuck. Um, I won't get this job interview with these better people than me. So what happens when you have all that in your mind, my emotions of self-defeat? Your my emotions created the reality going in there. So I walk into the parking lot and at the very um, front of the doorway, there's a very um, expensive, BMW is like newish model, like things gotta be worth, like I'm thinking like price of a house. And I know that's the owner's car. Now my car was an old um, Corolla and it was a bit rusted and you had to keep putting oil every third day or it would burn the oil out, it was leaking oil. 
And I remember going in there, head down, and I sit down, and I'm thinking, I don't want to be here because he's going to know I'm a failure, is what I was thinking internally. So the guy comes out, and those who have ever seen The Wolf of Wall Street, um, the movie with um, Jordan Belford, that's the one that Leonardo DiCaprio did, slick back here, confident, cocky. Um, this guy comes out, and he's a little bit overweight because he's been living the good life. Like this guy looked like he's been having steaks and wine and brandy every night. He kind of, he's got a little golden um, ring on and in that ring. He's got a diamond, a huge diamond on his pinky. I look and he's got a tie on and it looks expensive. And he's got a, a tie clip on and he comes out, takes my hand and he goes, tell me about yourself. And I'm mumbling, fumbling, stumbling. And I'm thinking, oh, my name is Colin. I'm looking for work. And he looks at me as if I'm wasting his time, which I really was. And he goes, there's a bell out there. If you can't handle this job, bring it and leave. No questions asked. You can leave. You're good. Are you going to ring, ring, the, ring the bell? And I'm thinking, I said to him, oh, I don't know. Then he tells me pretty much, don't call me. I'll call you. And when you hear that, that means, you know what? You didn't get the job. Get out of my, my office. I remember going home feeling like all defeated and down. And I remember having to go back to that uh, call center place, which I hated so much because it was minimum wage and it, I, would, I couldn't relate to anyone there. And I had a sick mother, my daughter. I'm, not, I'm only seeing her about an hour a day. And um, I found that it was really um, bad. So based on that, um, that's what I found. And having that negative, not the hunter mentality of just go for the kill, get the job, get the job, I wasn't being the farmer. So when you are networking, you got to think of it as planting seeds for a future harvest. So consider the stuff I said earlier about, you know, you're getting your portfolio, you're doing like um, percentages, you're writing articles, etc. Now you're going out there and you start networking. I know it's going to hard to network in COVID, but go with the mindset of I'm here to help people as well. So if you know if someone has an opportunity, talk to them, share with them the opportunity. Just don't go in for yourself being selfish. I used to work for another um, program, much like Access, and that's the one where I got the job as the instructor. And part of the posi position of the uh, workshops, you would say, introduce yourself to another person to get the networking you know, muscles um, working because most times when you have a workshop, you have complete strangers looking at like deers in the headlight, looking at each other. They don't know each other. They're stressed. They're tired, anxious, and they don't want to communicate because then they feel it's going to prove that they're a failure in life. That's the mindset. And I was that same person, but it's not the case. So this one lady stood up and says, hi, uh, my name is Becky, and I, um, I'm an admin um, person. And I want looking for work. I have a construction background and I'm looking for work. I just got laid off. Well, this other lady sends up says, really, because my brother-in-law works in construction. He just came up my place last night. He said he was looking for an in person. Like, can I have your number? And that was the magic happened where by planting the seeds, the opportunity happened. And then they connected and I take it the woman was employed. So next slide, please. So over 86% of all opportunities um, are found through networking, he knows you, refers you. That was why I was not fun work because I was embarrassed. I didn't want to talk to anyone because the second question I was asking, what do you do for a living, at these events and parties and stuff? And I was just being silent. So when you figure out the 80%, 86% of all opportunities are found through networking, I encourage you, please take networking seriously. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we're in the COVID time and you can't always get out there at a networking event, but you can do Zoom calls. So go on LinkedIn, connect with people and actually have conversations. Um, even tap into your own cultures. And the reason why I say that is there are people just like you they maybe speak the language and maybe they have an opportunity. So I used to tell people, um, like if they went to church, you know, 
have you checked out talking to people at your church? Like not everyone's unemployed at your church. Surely there's someone there who's employed can maybe help you. And they never thought of that. They figured they only went there to worship and that was it. Same thing for the temple and the mosque, etc. So even language, like if you spoke like, for example, um, Cantonese, you know, there's more chance uh, and you have a finance background, there's more chance of you making connection with the um, Hong Kong Bank of Canada networking organization versus me trying to come in there as like a black man who doesn't speak the language and doesn't, you know, is not part of the culture. So really network for success, use Zoom, use Microsoft Teams, you know, really try to connect with people. And that's how we're able to get over the hump of uh, COVID and still make connections, okay? Next, please. So when you're networking, this is very important. This is from LeVar Burton, um, the guy who played Jordy on Star Trek and the guy who played, um, um, was it in Roots, the uh, movie uh, way back when. So because storytelling and visual storytelling was put in the hands of everyone, we now have to become storytellers, LeVar Burton. Now, when you're looking to network or connect with people, people are more interested in the story you have to share, not find me work. I remember um, there's two gentlemen when I was working at this not-for-profit organization for employment. Um, I'll say one name was um, Johnny and the other name was um, Harmon. Now, Johnny was a uh, young man. He was like a like 10th generation Canadian, probably, I think he was like 18 or so. And he was looking for work and he dropped out of school and he was trying to get back in school. And his mom was always nagging him, find work, find work, find work. And he would come to me looking for work. So I'd get him a job at a uh, warehouse and it was stable employment. And then three days later, I would see him walking through my door. It's 10 o'clock. I'm thinking, wait, hold a second. What are you doing here? She did not work. Well, I lost my job. You know, things didn't work out. This is my third time coming late and told me to go home and don't come back. I think to myself, you just started three days ago. How could you be late every single day? Um, the bus runs, and it's not as if you're living in another city. It was about 10 blocks from where you lived. I calculated it for you. I even showed you the bus route. So I find another job, and then a um, week goes by. I think it's good. I see him coming at 10 o'clock, 10 or 2. And I go, wait, what's going on? It goes, I lost that job too because I had an appointment uh, to go to. And they said, if I go to the appointment, because I just started then, I won't be able to come back. And I told them, could you not have rescheduled your dentist appointment? Why would you think you can start work one day and then take an appointment in the afternoon, the next? So then that was one fella. The next um, person was Harmon. And Harmon was a um, older man. He was um, nearsighted, he had sight problems, he was illiterate. He was probably, I think, 63 at the time. He immigrated um, from the West Indies uh, because his daughter was a single mother and uh, she needed help raising the daughter. So he did a, a job as a janitor at the facility, but he was getting like a couple hours here and there every day, it wasn't much. So he comes to me looking for employment and I'm thinking, how the heck I'm gonna get this guy who's 63 years old, he's nearsighted and he's illiterate. Like, I don't even know where to begin, but because he wanted to help his daughter, that was his story. I wanna still provide for my daughter, help her succeed and raise his granddaughter. Um, I was able to get him employment as a, a scrapyard where you didn't have to do any reading or writing. You just had to just know where, which bins to put stuff. So he, he stayed employed and he was good to go, but the other person kept coming back to me. And then I got the point, I just cut him off. I would say to him, you know what? Yes, I will look for you, but I wasn't going to bother because I knew that he was every employer I sent him to, he was burning the bridges with that employer. So I didn't help him at the end because he was, his story was, I want a job to stop my mom from arguing with me and nagging me. So who would you rather employ? The person with the nagging mother or the person who wants to help his um, daughter succeed and raise his granddaughter? What do you guys think? Obviously the one, the older man. So your story, be the narrator of your story, of your story not the character. 
And what I mean by that is um, there's, a, there's three parts we play in life. You can play the villain, play the village fool, or you can play the hero. Be the hero of your own story. Okay, so next slide, please. <clears throat> so when you're telling a story, you know, create an amazing online portfolio, showcase samples of your work, join and participate in social media groups in your industry, like tell the story of who you are and why you're the best person to be connect with. Okay, next one, please. So <clears throat> once again, when you're networking out there, you're planting seeds for the future harvest give more than you expect to receive. It's not about me, it's about we. What I mean by that is many people go out there thinking it's me, 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 but when you think of the mindset of helping everyone, you too will be helped in the um, future. It's just karma, how the universe works. Next. So who wants an additional tip? I got an additional one. Sounds good? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, next slide. Additional tip is know the end at the beginning. It all starts from belief. If you cannot see it, you will not achieve it. Uh, just be open for opportunities and use any opportunities as stepping stones. So work your plan from the future to the present. So if you want to be a manager at a certain company, visualize yourself as the manager. Then what Go back like a couple months or a year. What would it take for you to get your foot in the door at that place? Who would you have to connect with? Who would you have to partner with? Who would you have to maybe talk with? And then go back further. Um, how would you find that person exactly? How would you meet them? Would it be Zoom? Would it be just your resume? Would it be through group chat? So you're working the group chat, the networking, you meet the person, the person gives you the, the position, you do a phenomenal job because you all are amazing and then eventually become the manager. So go with that future first and then go backwards and then work your plan, okay? So what steps do you need to take to make your dreams a reality? And I think that's it. Next slide. So you wanna know more, learn more hacks, reach out to me. It's Colin McLean Solutions at gmail.com. And we are done. How's that for time? I know it's a lot I threw in, but what do you guys think? Thank you so much, Colin. I'll leave this slide up so people have your contact information and we'll give everyone ch a chance to start typing your questions into the Q&A tab. Okay. Um, so I'm just checking here. It looks like we... Okay, we don't have a question yet, but um, please do look for the Q&A tab found at the bottom of your screen and you can start typing your questions in. Um, there was a lot to cover today, so I'm sure there will be a lot of questions as well. Um, Colin, if people want your LinkedIn, um, I don't know if you have it on the next slide. No, so your email is no. there. Um, are you comfortable? Like, is it better yeah, for sure. people to contact you through your email? Yeah, they can do LinkedIn or email. Um, doesn't matter. All right. Hmm, interesting question. Is it okay if someone else is networking for you? um okay that's a good question okay why is that yeah um, i think you need to tell us a little bit more like how would that work like who is networking for you um is does that mean okay maybe maybe okay i'm, I'm just gonna assume that maybe it's a, it's a friend who's you know trying to network on someone's behalf just kind of reaching out their, to their own network maybe mm. Yeah, that could that could be it. But I also had um, someone like I would have um, mothers calling me saying that their son is looking for work. And I'm thinking it's 11 o'clock in the uh, morning. Where is your son? Oh, he's sleeping. You work late shift. No, he was just tired. <laughs> now, my indication is your son is lazy and he doesn't want to um, look for work. And that was usually was the time because I would say, OK, well, have him call me. Here's my number, and I can arrange it a, a time to meet, and they would never would call, right? 
or I would schedule it for 11 o'clock and then they wouldn't show up. Okay, so there was about how can I put a maternity leave on my CV to explain that's my, my um, career. Uh, Sonia, do you wanna answer that one? Um, cause you, cause it's not, it's a good, it's a good reason why you have a gap. What would you suggest they put on the resume? Um, it's not really, a, cause you're planning on going back to your company. Like you're still employed there. Like kind of just like, for example, you've been working somewhere from 2018 to 2000, like to present you're still yeah employed there i mean i would just leave it on there unless you've taken a bigger gap it's not a mat leave a mat leave i don't think is really considered a gap in your resume at all mm -hmm. um you know everyone has kids and they go away and they come back to work yeah so, so just leave it as working as present yeah you're still working there um unless like it was a gap of you know three to four years you it was more than just mat leave um yeah in that case um for any reason, if you do have gaps on your resume, I would recommend um, using uh, a, functional a functional resume, yeah. um, <laughs> which like. helps, yeah, which helps highlight your your skills and experience, and maybe projects that you worked on uh, that are relevant to the position, rather than a timeline. So you know, if 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 your gap is that big. Mm -hmm. um other than that for a mat leave that's a normal thing like we're humans <laughs> exactly we, we, you know I we, we have leave. children and you come back to work it's nothing to be frowned upon and that's the hardest job uh, ever i think parenting okay because there's no breaks um <laughs> i'm connected with a career marketing service who would start conversations for potential employers okay yeah that's good no that's fine that's perfectly fine uh just be ready um to make the connections. And that's why you gotta be your salesperson. So just don't rely on them. Uh, you've gotta be ready to answer or have conversations after that, that's fine. Is it wise to switch our study areas job focus from civil to IT? Well, um, IT, I can't really answer that because I would say there's more growth in IT because it's there's app development, there's web development, et cetera. But if you're not really a programmer, like I'm not a programmer, so I would not go into IT. I would probably have to go more civil. So you got to know your skill set. Can you physically do this job? Yes or no? Look at job postings and see. But IT is always growing. And what I like about IT too is you can work from home. Um, I've got a friend who actually, he's a programmer, he's in IT, and he's able to live in Tobago. He moved from Canada to Tobago and he works remotely, right? Civil engineering, I don't know if you could really do that. Um, how can I make sure my resume will pass an a ATS? Uh, what's that, that scanning system, ATS? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, well, first thing I suggest is look at the um, job posting. Uh, look at the words that they're using on the job posting. See if you can use it. Now, if you look at um, 10 job postings for the same position, you're going to see there's a certain pattern, but it's going to take you some time to recognize that pattern. They'll have certain keywords will keep coming up all the time. Put those words in and that's what you, what you do. And then what I would do is I would save the resume um, I would say first name, last name, then the, then the company. And then the next one, you can just tweak it. So maybe um, if you're going for administrative, they want you to do social media as the most important thing. The next company may want social media down below. So I find the most important things are usually the first five or six things on a resume. Then things which are not as important, you usually put them down lower. So you'll have to change them, but put your first name, last name, the company in the position so that when you are going for a job interview, you know exactly uh, which resume to take. So I remember for me, I, I didn't do that. I just called it call in business resume, business resume. And there's like business resume number 37, business resume 101. And I had no idea which one they saw. No, I left work and I'm starting all over again. Okay. So then um, what you could do is for the, the mat leave, just, I just, you know what, do the functional resume 
And then um, if you've done any things on the side, like helping people or volunteering, put that on. So for uh, Shima, I would say do a functional resume. Do not do a chrono chronological because chronological will show exactly um, first things first that you weren't working. How can I value, how do you add value to people when you're new to a city? Well, um, as I always say, with every opportunity in life, it starts with a conversation. Start talking with people. You never know. Um, a while back, I, um, when I was in the import export, I was learning Cantonese um, from some of the workers. And that was how they added value to me. Um, so start conversations, get comfortable talking with people, and you never know. Any other ones, questions? No? Um, Colin, did you uh, respond to the last two ones as well? The last two ones? Oh, shoot. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope I scroll down, right? Okay, need more coffee. No worries. Um, very interesting presentation. I adhere to everything you explained to us, but I feel it's easier said than done. Okay, I've been doing the all things the past six months. No success. Sustain the same energy. Long time newcomers. Well, your thoughts become things. So, a uh, thing of of the very interesting presentation. Remember, I was in your shoes. So, go back. To my presentation where I bought a house, lost my job, um, being un unemployed, uh, was not networking. Um, I wasn't selling myself uh, to other people. I went through a huge depression, dealing with a mother who had Alzheimer's, you know, um, dealing with other issues and challenges. So I'm saying it's yes, it's possible. You just haven't found the right box to go in to network with the right people. So what I suggest is you got to network out there and start making more friends. The 86% rule, you've got to do that. Okay. Um, hope that helps you. Just don't give up because giving up doesn't serve your serve you at all. Okay. What would you suggest to develop sales skills or confidence in general? Um Sales skills, I would say, you know what, um, take a job doing the call center work because that's a skill. That's, it will, you'd be paid for it. It won't be pretty, but at least you can say you have some kind of sales skills. I would read more, listen to more positive messages and hang around positive people, okay? And just use that customer service role as like a filler for until you find something that's really you can always leave, right? Don't stay in it for like three years, just sending it for a couple months. And that's how you develop the skill set, okay? How to express career break for my higher study in the resume. How to express career break for my higher study. Oh, so you've gone back to school. Well, just tell them like in your functional resume, you would put that you went back to school from this time period to that time period. How long gap is that in my resume? I came to Canada two years ago, but I haven't found related job, project management, just working part-time survival jobs. Fully get, understand that. Is that bad to bring the survival jobs while I'm on my resume? Um, yeah, just put, just put that on. I would say put the, it's better to have something than nothing at all. But maybe try to talk about the stuff you've done at Walmart. So again, this is where the functional resume comes in. Um, what you can do is you can also volunteer your time with the organization and work on a uh, project management um, for them. And then use that as quotations, your kind of employment and it shows that you have the skill set. Okay. Uh, next one, hope that helps you. Colin, I got a couple of job offers and have to decline one. How to say no to a job that's been referred by a mentor? Okay, considering the other job meets my current requirements. 
Okay, first things first, make sure you secure the other job. Do not say no until you have the papers and documents signed. Um, thank you for your time and saying at this moment, it's not a right fit. I do apologize. And then if you can maybe refer someone to them, that would be the way to um, do that, okay? Thank you, sorry. Is it okay if I leave unrelated work experience? If I leave unrelated work experience, for example, if you're applying for a bank and you worked at a warehouse, do I include the warehouse experience? Um, depends. So, again, this is a functional resume. So, this person's asking about um, not having the relevant work experience and they want to work in a bank. But depends on how big the gap is. If you worked at the, at the warehouse for the past five years and you haven't been able to secure work in a bank, then you should probably put it down. If you only worked a year, then maybe just kind of just hide it. So I think for you, functional resume is the way to go, whereby you put the banking stuff, their skills, and you put the other stuff you've done in the warehouse, maybe like organizing stock in, not sure what you did exactly, and then take it from there, okay? So function resume, not chronological, you should use. Mm. There's another. Oh yeah. So uh, not a question, but thank you so much for the session. It was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, how about a general resume when the career marketing service is reaching out? Uh, well, whatever resume, uh, you, you're needing. So I would say if you don't have the skill set and you're not working currently in the field and you haven't been working currently. So for example, um, if you have been working in the field of maybe um, finance, you've all worked in finance and there hasn't really been much of a change, use the chronological resume. If you've had to do survival jobs and this marketing um, service is reaching out, use the functional um, because you have done the finance, but you haven't done it recently. You had a lot of um, contract work, use the functional. Hope that helps you out. How to get a job without networking. Can, mm, I personally think it's impossible because I have yet to find a job without networking. Every job I've ever had was found through networking. So um, embrace networking. What do you have to lose, right? And as I always say, with every great opportunity in life, it starts with a conversation. Start these new conversations because who knows you refers you. Um, the service believes that a compelling resume can also be longer than two pages in particular, as I have 20 years professional experience. Okay, um, remember, everyone's really busy and no one has time to be review resumes. Only ones that have more than two pages are IT resumes. So what I would do is I would try to cut down um, the ones which don't relate, the experience you have, and only use the ones that relate. So functional resume. Um, you can have, you can send them, like if you wanna take a chance to send them like a five page res res resume, it depends. If you're going for like a, senior VP role, then you can have the five page resume. But if you're going for just a regular um, role at a company, then the more pages isn't good. So if you're in IT or if you're in like higher management, you can do the more pages. But if you are not going for like a director or VP or president role or IT, then try to keep it two pages. And then if they want more, you can give them more. That's my advice. When they reach out, um, they do not want to reach out to employers for only a specific job, as the idea is to reach the hidden job market. Yes. Um, so most of the jobs are found through the hidden job market, and that's what you have to do. So what I also do is if you're looking for to work for a certain um, firm, like reach out on LinkedIn and see who the people are at the firm, try to connect with them, you know, or if they belong to a um, some kind of business group on LinkedIn, see who the people are and then connect with them directly. <clears throat> so what are some ways to improve soft skills uh, documents on your CV? 
as courses are usually hard skills and um, that train a specific task, things like adaptability. Um, soft skills are good, but I think I would go more for the hard skills. Um, you could take courses on some soft skills if you know, like you have like emotional intelligence, stuff like that, but it depends what you're applying for. How to work smarter when you are a new French speaking person in an English speaking province like Ontario and you have more than 10 years experience in the health field. How to quickly guide you to finding work in your field? Well, you've got an advantage because for one, um, Canada is a bilingual com country. You speak the language. Um, it's just a matter of you connecting with the right person at a health field. Um, join like health groups, you could um, join, join associations. That's how you do it because you think about it, if you're going to hire someone and you speak French and you have experience in the industry, they're most likely going to speak the person with the other language versus someone who does not speak the um, language. Okay, so work both angles. Uh, work in the employment agency. Thank you, Colin. I'm sorry, it, we are at time right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so if anyone does have any more questions, you've got Colin's email in front of you or you can email uh, at asset access and then we'll be able to um, I can I can make a connection with Colin for you as well. Colin, is there anything you'd like to add before uh, we end today? Just know that this is just the um, there's better times yet ahead. This is not the end of your story. And of every story out there, the hero goes through a lot of challenges and then they overcome it. So you're just going through that hero phase of finding your hero within. So keep working, keep developing, don't give up, keep networking, and you'll definitely um, succeed. Don't give up.